I want to give a big thanks to Squarespace for sponsoring this week's video. More about them at the end of the video. Hello everybody, welcome back to the Bros of DK. I'm Leslie and today I'm taking you on another adventure. We are in the south of France. As you can see, it's very sunny today, lovely weather, and we're on our way to explore a hidden time capsule. This place I've had on my map for a very long time now. Okay, there I go, into the location. Okay, it's on top of a mountainside, and we have to go all the way through this overgrown entranceway. As you can see, there are already some statues, the vases with plants growing from them. This place has been left behind for quite some time now. And it can definitely be seen from where we are walking right now. I always love these, these types of locations where you have to make yourself through the bushes to get to these places. That means that it's definitely abandoned, that for sure. Oh my God. And uh, this is crazy. And that it's probably holds some value from the former residence, locked away forever. You can see that nobody has been here for a very, a very long time. Oh. I think we are entering onto the property of the house itself. Oh. Right in my face. Okay, welcome to the house. It's actually a very, very tiny French house. So let's go in and let's explore this place. Amy lived a very secluded life, a very contemplated life and a very meditative one. This was his ideal life. In the year 1958, Mr. Amy Gabelot divorced his former wife and wanted a new life. He decided that he wanted to live far away from civilization. He set out on a quest and built a tiny house on top of a mountain, on the outskirts of a small picturesque French town. Mr. Amy Gabelot lived here alone for over five decades, but he didn't mind. He was happy with the way his life was and enjoyed the time by himself a lot. He filled his days with creative work. He loved painting, reading and writing. His life consisted of simplicity and self-sufficiency. After his passing in the year 2012, the house got abandoned for some time. It was too secluded for most people. But by surprise, after almost one year of abandonment, an Arabian family bought it in the year 2014 and transformed it into their vacation home. Their influence is to be seen all over the inside and outside of the house. But it didn't last for long because only a year later they abandoned it already and never came back to this place. Perhaps the house will find a new lover, but most likely it will rest forever and commit its marriage to Mother Nature. Let's explore this wonderful place today and let's relive the lives of the former occupants.
let's now start exploring this abandoned place. I'm really excited to see all the things that are left behind in here. It has been abandoned for quite some time now and you can definitely see it from the backyard. All the furniture, the backyard furniture is still present here. It's rotting away and the plants are totally overgrowing it. It's just fascinating to see. Look, wow, this is amazing to see. You see the tree over here? has grown through this chair, through the plastic chair over the years that has been left behind. Wow, that must have been here for a very, very long time. They had a little outside sitting area over here as well. Some chairs underneath there. And then we come onto the main property where you see the tiny house of Mr. Remy and later from the Arabian family that lived here. It's actually a very, very fascinating home that we will go inside on later. I just want to show you a little bit more of the area around here where they used to live. Let me go over here and show you that this place is literally in the middle of nowhere. Trees all around it. Oh, I would love, but just love to live here. Okay. First, before I go inside of the house, let me show you their washing area. Before the Arabian family moved in here, Emmy used to live alone in this place. He had no wife and lived almost the entirety of his life I believe he lived here for 70 or 80 years alone in this house. Wow. This was the washing area. Put the chair away and welcome you inside the washing area. The bathroom actually. It's very tiny. I don't even fit through the door. You see it over there in the window. It's pretty crazy to get into here. Oh my God, I don't know how they did this. Wow, what a tiny bathroom. And everything is still left in here, as you can see. With the sink, with the cups, to rinse your mouth after brushing your teeth. The mirror above the sink. A little clock face to check the time when you went to bed. And all the things, even the towels, are still left here. Isn't that just crazy? The shavers. <laughs> and then the tiger print <laughs> toilet in the corner. <sighs> wow. I think this is the first artifact from the Arabian family that later owned this place after Mr. Remy. Wow. Here are some clothes left of them, trousers, a pink blouse, I think it is. Yes, but not much more to see in here. So let's now head over to the main house. Oh, I just love this place. The birds chirping in the background, just fascinating. But what gets me, what, what makes me really sad is seeing chairs like this, beautiful antique upholstery chairs left outside to be broken down and decayed over time. These could be perfectly in a home, definitely. Okay, we now have to make our way through the bushes over here, through the front, to the front door. Wow, and you are not gonna believe what we will see inside of this door. At first, when I came here, I was totally amazed when I first saw this room. This was the dining area of the house with one of the most fascinating antiques that I've ever seen. Literally, I've, I've never seen, even not in castles, antiques like this. And then in the tiny house, in the middle of a forest, where you would at least not expect it, you find antiques like this left behind. Wow, these are things that you would imagine being in palaces and castles around the world. But no, it's somewhere in the middle of nowhere. 
and the French forest and the tiny house left behind. But first, let me show you the Arabian family that lived here after Mr. Emmy. You can see pictures of them here on the wall. Childs, people dining together. Castanetas, they are from Spain. And again, the first beautiful rock over here on the wall. And then we have another picture of a man that might have been Emmy himself. Wow, this photo frame is totally broken. You can see him over here smoking a nice pipe. I can also see this little spoon underneath. Wow, these are amazing. Let's see what's on there. Winston, is that in America? I'm not 100% sure. Can I focus this? Yes, there you can see it. Beautiful spoon. Oh, let's look at the furniture inside of this place. Let's start off with this big drone here to the side. It's just a magnificent piece, beautifully carved. Then we have a red cushion underneath that gives it a nice touch. Wow. Even on the bottom, not a single piece of this chair has not been designed carefully. I love it. And I think there would be a little statue in here, but that has now gone. Somebody has taken it out at some point. Republic Francais, Medaille Bronze. Oh, this is for the man himself, Serge Bleu. 1949, it says on there. That's amazing. From that time on, this man has lived in this place. A nice painting as well next to it. And then we have this cabinet over here. Beautifully carved. Wow, let's see what's in there. All the glasses that they would use in the house are still in here. Can I lock this up? Yeah, it still locks. Have a look at this masterpiece. Fascinating. Again, a rug above it. Nice rug. And then we have the center table. Mr. Remy, of course, had some friends over from time to time, but he totally lived alone in this place. So most of the time he would eat alone at this table, looking at his amazing furniture that he acquired over the years. And he definitely loved the color red to make accents in his home. Have a look at these chairs. They must have been one of the, they are most likely one of the most unique pieces of antique that I've seen worked into a chair. Wow, the carving of two ladies, the flower above. We see the red accents coming back. I know you all love when I show these pieces in detail and definitely when they are so beautiful. And that's why I do this. An incredible chandelier hanging here above the table. And then to the side, all around this room, he put chairs. You can see another woman carved into this chair. Another rug on the wall. And this more looks more like an Egyptian chair, chair or yeah. I'm not 100% sure, but it's in this home and I quite love it. These faces on either side, the hands, like a red cape. <laughs> and this cabinet is one of the most fascinating ones that I've ever seen. Two little guys carved in here, playing a musical instrument. They didn't even bother to put pillars in there. No, they designed it in every single way possible. Wow. There's even some money left behind. Two euro cents still left here. Let's open this one up. Oh, that chocolate's in here. No way. Ferrero Rocher. These are one of my most favorite chocolates. Okay, I love those. 
they're probably not good anymore. <laughs> no, definitely not. Let's close that up. Nicely. Definitely also a very, very religious man that lived in here. But I don't know why the Arabian people left that religious symbol behind in here. Amazing pieces. And down here, we have a depiction of former life. You see a woman slaughtering a chicken to the side there. A stove here in the middle of the room that would lit up the room and make it very cozy at night. Wow. Above the fireplace, there is a plate left behind. Beautiful plate. But underneath, there are taxidermy scorpions on display over here in this room. Look at those, they look fascinating. Wow, maybe he found them himself because in this part of France, these scorpions run around. There's a third one over here as well. Candles, everything. This hoof is actually the wrong way around. There's like this saying in Belgium, that if you put a hoof this way around, like with the bottom side, uh, the, with, with, that it can fall out, the luck will fall out of the, of the hoof. You should actually put it like this. And then the luck can fall into the hoof. Amazing. Here we have a depiction of a saint. And then we can see some Arabian tapestries coming back. As you can see, this is a rug from somewhere in Arabia. And a beautiful bellow underneath. I've never seen such an amazing bellow. But it still functions. Wow. And then to end it off on this side, we have this cabinet that I can barely bring into picture. Have a look at that one. I'm gonna take out the light and give you a good look at this one. It has this amazing carving of grapes on the side of it. Let's see what's in there. Does this even open? But unfortunately, there's nothing left in there. And some tools for the fireplace as well to the side here. And now I will take you all to the upstairs and show you the private area where the man used to sleep all his life. A very, very tiny hallway, stairway leading up to the top floor. Look at this. So many clothes left behind and in front of me. I can barely walk here. Oh. I've not seen this one yet. Oh my God, such an amazing bedroom. <laughs> but this is actually only, also the only bedroom in this place. Look at this place. Even the clothes of him are still left behind here to the side. Beautiful clothing. Wow. Here we have a mirror hanging from the wall. Gold plated mirror. And this over here is the same chair as we saw outside. I actually should, I'm, I'm gonna do it at the end of the video. I will make sure of that, that I put other a share as well into this room, just out of respect. And we have another incredible mirror where you could look at yourself in the morning. Still made bed over here in the middle of the room. This is an amazing bed. Look at the carvings on the crown of it. Nightstand with a marble top. And yet again, a rug behind this. Because the walls of this place are pretty bare. And he put rugs all around the place to give it some cozy feelings. Nice lanterns to the side as well. Okay, a military picture. This might have been Aimé in his younger days. And a woman as well over here on the wall. That's crazy. In the middle of the room, we have a beautiful chandelier hanging. But unfortunately, some vandals have also come into this place and destroyed the ceiling with a lighter. That's just crazy. He even 
had a balcony where you could open it up and have a look at the beautiful forest that lays in front of his house. <laughs> All the junk on there. Here in the corner of the room, we have another one of those upholstery chairs. The design on this one is also amazing. It has some lion heads on either side of it. And even the feet of it are designed. A Singer sewing machine. One of my favorite kind of sewing machines that you can find in abandoned places. Let's see if the clothes are also left behind. And yes, they are. <laughs> look at a look at the antique design on this piece of furniture over here. There's like these levels in there, these display levels that you could put like artifacts all over this piece of furniture. Wonderful to see. Little doors to open up that reveal different things. And there's a little skeleton left behind in here, as you can see. And on the wall, there's one more artifact of the Pharaoh time. And a little drawer here to the side to put some socks inside, a remote, and all these different kind of things. Okay, very, very, very interesting bedroom. One last overlook before we go further. everybody and now it's time to wander through the kitchen and as you can see it's completely overthrown everything is just on the ground so I'm gonna be very careful to not break anything while I go through here okay let me see this was his kitchen wow oh I don't think it's even possible to go through here look at this the designed plates are still here crazy they are probably made in france yeah. oh they are from england churchill it says on the back wow and i just left here these are the last dishes and here the teeth would be brushed in the sink wow look at this the fridge and everything see if there is any food in, inside left oh this is completely stuck no i'm not gonna open that that's probably gonna be a smell that you don't want to behold look at this even a little drawing of a child on the wall and the coats the last person that lived here are also still left wow let me try because i need to get to this room. Oh, I see, I can also do it from the outside. Let me try that. Let's see. Yeah, there's the room that we were looking for. Wow. The sun has set a little bit, and now you can see the backyard even better. All the junk is thrown outside of the house. Very crazy. Wow. And now we have actually the last room of the house. There's not much more than this to see. And that's very unfortunate. But over here you can see the Arabian influence that happened in this house. But the Arabian people that came here, of course, only used it as a vacation house. So they only put a few things in here. But it nicely mixes with the French designs and the French antiques that are left in here. Wow. Over here we have an incredible cabinet. Again, completely carved out. No detail has, missed, has been missed out on. Some junk in here. Another amazing throne here to the side, with a costume above it. Even the tie is still left here. 
that was very strange. On the ground here, there are hundreds and hundreds of letters, all directed to Aimé. I just noticed this. All these letters are directed to Aimé. You can see it on there. Wow. And this one is from 1961. And then we have a table with some upholstery chairs around it. I love these chairs. They're quite unique. But they are completely broken as well. Very, very unfortunate. Another cabinet. Some carvings on there. A few ladies in the field wandering around. And in here, clothes left behind. I'm wondering what this room used to be used for. Was it a dining area? I don't know. An outside dining area maybe. But why would you put such nice furnitures in an outside dining area that's completely wet? Okay. I think the Arabian people used to serve food over here. And then we have these very, very colorful rocks on the wall. There's a lot of these. They remind me of India. I've been to India, but I've uh, also been to Jordan. They also had them in Jordan. Quite love these. And then we have one last cabinet here to the side. Again, very, very unique carvings in there. It's all very delicate. <laughs> and the chandelier above the table as well. Let's see what's behind here. One little... This runs behind the house. You can see the back of the house. There's nothing that it leads to. Just the mountainside on this side of the house. I would have expected a cave in here, but it's not present. Oh, and here is the chimney of the house, just fallen down. Wow, what a this. of this week's video, I want to thank the sponsor Squarespace. Squarespace is a powerful online platform on, your, on which you can build your own website. But that's not the only thing that Squarespace can do for you. On your own website, you can also create a community because people can reply, like, and share the posts that you make on there. And those posts you can categorize, schedule, and even share to other social media platforms. I know that a lot of my viewers also have a lot of passions and some of them even might consider starting their own store. But Squarespace already has a great e-commerce capability. And on top of that, you can also put extensions on your Squarespace website to help you manage inventory, do your sales taxes, and even help you ship items around the world. And there are many more extensions to that. And there's one more great thing that I want to talk about. And that's the membership capability of Squarespace. Here you can start your own gated community on your website where you can generate revenue through. You can manage these people, send them notifications and many more things. And it's very easy to use. So what do you have to do? Just go to squarespace.com to start your free trial. And when you're ready to launch your website, go to squarespace.com slash bros of DK to get 10% off your first domain or website. I want to thank Squarespace one more time for sponsoring this week's video and let's end it off now. Okay, oh wow, look over here. I just found the glasses, maybe of Mr. Ramé, maybe of one of the Arabian people that once lived here. How would you put one of these on? It seems very difficult to me. They're like, they would be right on your nose or something like that. <laughs> Not gonna do it, just gonna put it here. But with that all said, I'm gonna thank you all for watching this week's video. It was an amazing place to explore. Such beautiful antique furnitures I've never before seen in my life, even not in the castles that I explore. So yeah, I'm very thankful for that, for the lives for the, uh, of the people that once lived here and that I could document it and put it forever on YouTube.
If you like the video, please like it, subscribe down there if you're new to the channel, write me a nice comment, and in the description there's also a link to Patreon. There I just ask if you have the money, please uh, yeah, consider supporting the channel because I travel around the world, it's very expensive for me, I'm very young still, and it would help me out a lot. So with that all said, thank you very much, and I'll see you next week with another amazing exploration. Bye-bye. Love you.